Okay, so there's a day for imaging. Let me, let me redraw the picture I just drew for the question a little bit bigger. We're gonna we're gonna start with an optic axis and make that pretty big. We start with a lens. I'm gonna make that pretty big. In the first case, we'll do a converging lens. Pretty tall and thin. Now again, we're taking the approximation that the thickness of this lens is much, much smaller than all the other distances involved. Um, and we're gonna start with an object at some particular location. Maybe I'll put it here. And often these objects are drawn as arrows with a particular height, uh, say Y1. And you know, imagine just a spot here, like uh, in the video I, I filmed, measure this is like the, this filament of the bulb. This is pretty tiny, it's pretty much like a spot. And this is gonna emit lots of different rays in all possible, uh, oh, and let me just label. Okay, so it's, it's a distance Y1 away from the optic axis. It's a distance uh, O, this is an object, away from the lens. And the focal length of the lens, let's say the focal length of the lens is somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, this is the focal length of the lens. This has nothing to do with anything else yet. It just has to do with the, the properties of the lens. Okay, so, so what's gonna happen is this object is gonna emit a whole bunch of rays in all possible directions. And some of the rays are gonna miss the lens. We don't care about those, but the rays that hit the lens let me draw a few of those. Okay. And those rays will see, I'll, I'll sort of talk more about this in a second, we'll see that they're gonna all uh, go through this lens. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have erased what I did before. All right, so let's see, we start at Y1. Uh, so, so these rays before they hit the lens, maybe, maybe I'll say so. Before they hit the lens, the rays are all at different y's, so they're not they're not at y one anymore, right? Because they've propagated through free space at all possible angles, so they're all at different y's, but they all came from a particular spot. So there's some relationship between the y that they are at and the theta that they hit the lens at. And this is going to get multiplied by the lens transfer matrix, one minus one over F, zero, one. And this is going to give us the uh, what the rays do right on the other side of the lens. So Y is just going to stay Y. And theta, the angle, is going to change from theta to be theta minus Y over F. There we go. So, so the higher these rays are away from the optic axis, the more theta is going to change. And uh, as theta goes below the optic axis, theta is going to change in the other direction, right? Because y, the sine of y is positive here and it's negative here. So uh, theta, theta gets tilted down above the optic axis. It gets tilted up below the optic axis. And that's going to launch the rays out at all uh, whole new different angles. And let me, let me draw. Okay, so, so the way you do these problems is um, there, there is a special distance where all these rays are gonna converge. And how do I know what that distance is? Well, once, once you've worked out that there is a special distance where, where rays converge, uh, you can go back to just looking at the, the basis vectors, just looking at the, uh, the sort of special rays that are particularly easy to calculate because it's always easy to calculate the effect on basis vectors. So one of those basis vectors, and these, these are called uh, principal, principal rays. Um, I think they might have other, other names for them, but they're basically the basis vectors that we talked about last time. One basis vector is light that just goes straight through the lens, is gonna go straight, straight through the center of the lens. Maybe I didn't draw that quite, quite right. Ugh. Light that goes straight through the center of the lens is just going to keep on going. 
So that's one particularly easy to draw basis vector. So that's just going to keep on going, straight line. And then the other particularly easy vector to draw is a light that comes from this object and happens to be going parallel to the optic axis. Right, we know what happens to that light. It, all parallel rays go through the focals. So if this is the focal spot uh, where parallel rays would have come to a focus point, that means this particular parallel ray has to go through this, this spot here. And eventually these are going to meet. Uh, I didn't do a great job. Let me, let me cheat a little bit here. Let me change the focal length of my lens so that this actually comes comes to focus here. Uh, let me let me doubly cheat. I want to have it come to focus here, which meant that the focal distance of the lens had to be here. All right, now um, it. Unfortunately, the way I drew this picture, it looks like O and F are, are pretty similar, but that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, but what that means is that if, if this basis vector, the one that's parallel, goes through the focus, the focal point F, and this other basis vector that just goes straight through the center of the lens, um, if they converge at this point, it means, and this is what you'll prove in the homework, that all the other rays are also going to converge at this point, which is, which is pretty cool. And this point is called, well, the distance from this point to the lens, it's called the image distance. So let me draw, let me draw all the other rays. So this ray has to, has to come there. This ray has to come there. Uh, and they, they keep going if you don't put a screen there. This ray has to go there, and it'll keep going. This ray has to go there, and it'll keep going. This ray has to go there, and it'll keep going. Um, so, so these are the two basis, basis rays, and you can figure out where the image, image distance is just by geometry of taking these two basis rays and seeing where they converge. So often we'll draw the, the image here as a, an arrow that's upside down, pointing to there. And, and what you'll prove in the homework is that the relationship between the object distance, oh, I, I'll, let me say one more thing before I show what you're gonna prove in the homework. Um, um, this, this distance here turns out the, the image distance, the place where everything comes to focus, depends on the properties of the lens, F, and it depends on how far away your object is. But it doesn't depend on how far away from the optic axis you are. So another, another object here will come to focus halfway. And another object up here will come to focus over here. It'll always come to focus in the same plane, just in different, in different locations. And you can do this by by drawing all the rays and using linear algebra, which is a huge pain, or just by drawing the basis rays, the ones that go parallel to the optic axis and then have to go through the focal point, like all parallel incoming rays do, or the ray that just goes straight through the center of the lens, which doesn't get deflected at all. And so you can imagine for every point here, you could draw, draw those rays and maybe I, maybe I will begin to draw those, but it's going to get super complicated, right? The, the ray that goes straight through here is going to go through the focal, focal point and end up way down here. And the ray that goes straight through the center of the lens is just going to keep going and end up down here. And I wasn't quite careful enough. These should cross right at the, at the same distance. As, as the red, as the pink rays. And the, this spot here, I could do that same thing. So 
these diagrams can get super messy if you draw a lot of rays. That's why we typically don't draw all the random rays because because there's a lot of rays, right? For for every point, so imagine this isn't just three three particular objects, a star and an arrowhead and a spot. Imagine this is like, like the video I showed. Imagine this is like a whole dollar bill. Every point on that dollar bill is emitting rays at every possible theta. So there's you know, two dimensions of the dollar bill. And for each of those points, there's two dimensions that the rays could spray off. Um, so there's really four dimensions worth of stuff you would really need to keep track of if you were to do all the proper ray tracing. So that's why we focus on these uh, kind of basis rays. For every point on the, on the dollar bill, uh, there are special rays that happen to do particularly simple things. And you will, you will know from homework you know, by just taking some arbitrary theta, uh, arbitrary theta and y, propagating it, going through the lens, propagating it again, that there is a particular image distance where, where all of the all of the rays converge. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how clear, how much more clear that was than than the last time. But uh, I think you'll get a little bit of practice with this. It actually helps if you draw these diagrams to either do it on a computer and use you know the straight line features, or to do it with a ruler on real paper or on graph paper. Um, you know, as you could tell when I sort of do these things freehand, it's really hard to keep keep all the rays straight. It's not it's not clear that everything should come to focus here, but um, as as long as you really do do draw everything parallel, uh, the the linear algebra says that all these different the spray of rays from every possible point will converge to a single point in in the image plane. And you saw from the video of the dollar bill. Hopefully, many of you watched that that. As so, in that video, I moved the lens, but you can imagine it's keeping the lens fixed at, at zero or something and moving the object. As I move the object, the image is going to appear at a different spot and with a different magnification. So every time I move the object, I have to refine the spot where all the rays converge to make an image of the of the dollar bill. And. Uh, Again, from, from that magical homework problem I keep referring to, what you'll find is that the place where all the rays converge is going to obey the following formula. It's going to be one, one over the image distance plus one over the object distance equals one over the focal distance. And for this simple case of a single converging lens, the image distance is positive, the object distance is positive, and the focal length is positive. But I'm going to switch switch gears for a second and talk about two other cases where, excuse me, where some of these some of these these things are negative, but the same the same equation still applies. Uh, so let me let me sort of erase from the bottom up and, and take take questions on on this uh, simplest of the three imaging cases that I'm going to talk about. Yeah, I think I think another thing that people um, maybe struggle with is often these ray diagrams we draw so few rays. You have to remember there's like four you know four dimensions worth of rays coming off for every point on the image in two in two D. There's two dimensions worth of angle spray, and and for that whole complicated situation, we tend to draw two or maybe th at most three three rays just as representative representative rays. And we've worked out in advance from the linear algebra that all the other rays are going to come to focus at the same same place. All right, so, so this equation is going to hold for all these different situations that I'm going to talk about. But let me let me draw the following situation. Um, C 
So uh, here's my optic axis. I'm going to draw a diverging lens here. That's not super great, sort of meniscus shape. Again, if you're nearsighted, your glasses tend to be diverging lenses. Um, and I'm going to put an object here at some object distance. Oh, and um, what happens to these rays? Well, let me just draw draw a few. Well, let me just draw the two basis rays, and I'll I'll talk about what what happens to the rest of them. So the easiest basis ray to draw is, of course, the one that just goes straight through the center of the lens. So remember, this this object is at this point here, well, at every point, but particularly at this arrow, arrow tip, it's spraying out rays in all possible directions. And one of those rays happens to go right through the center of the lens and it'll just keep on going. And it's spraying out rays in all possible directions. And it happens to spray out a ray that goes parallel to the optic axis. That's another particularly simple one to consider. And the diverging lens uh, remember from last time, what it does is it, instead of uh, making the angle uh, point down toward the optic axis, it's going to make the angle point up away from the optic axis. So this is going to come up off at some, some positive angle. And we defined the focal length of a diverging lens to be the length that if we were to trace this ray back, so par parallel rays coming in, if we were to trace them back, with a dotted line, so these are kind of imaginary rays just for geometric purposes, it would hit at some, uh, some focal distance f. And, and this is, sorry, this is actually a negative, a negative distance. So um, for a diverging lens, f, f is negative. And so negative f is a real honest to God difference that I can use to label on a diagram. Uh, just sort of by definition so that everything works out. And you can see there's a special point here where these two rays meet. And if I were to draw, well, if I were to draw all the other rays, let me just do that in a different color. So rays that are kind of in between here, they're going to come off at some lesser angle. Rays that are in between here are going to come off at some some lesser angle. And so the, the physical the physical rays are all going to do this. It's going to come off at some greater angle. But if I were to trace these back with dotted lines, trace this back with a dotted line. So again, these aren't physical rays because I'm ignoring the effect of the lens here. I'm just tracing them all back with dotted lines. They would all end up meeting at some some point here, which is which is at some some image distance. So let me call this minus i. So if you were to use this formula with a positive o and a negative f, you would need something negative here to balance that, and and you would get a negative i. And so any any spot on these diagrams that's in the wrong, wrong side of the lens. So it's not forming an image on the side that where images are normally formed, it's forming it on the other side. Uh, we give those negative coordinates. And so this image distance is a negative distance. It's where all these dotted lines meet. And so we say that uh, we could draw a little arrow here. So arrow tip here is going to create this spray of rays and if we were to look at this with our, you know, well, it's going to create this spray of rays whose extensions backwards, ignoring the effect of the lens, these dotted lines uh, converge at some point here. And, and we call this, because it's on the wrong side of the lens, I call this a virtual image. Virtual 
the virtual image. All right, so, so in, one, in what sense is it not a real image? And in what sense is it an image at all? Well, it's not a real image because you, you can't put a screen here and, and have it focus, focus the light on the screen, right? The real rays, the rays that aren't dotted, um, they don't really do anything special here at this point. They, they go through the lens and then they spread out even more. So, so nothing, nothing physical is happening at this point. If you, if you put, a, put a screen here, nothing would happen. In fact, what would happen is you just block a lot of the light. So in what sense is this a real, in what sense is this an image at all? Well, if you were to look with your eyes at this lens, so imagine this is you, and you have uh, eyes here that you're using to look, look at, the, at this lens, this object will look smaller and closer, right? It will, the, 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 two, the following two situations give you the exact same set of rays. One situation is a situation we have where there's a big object and an actual lens that gives us spray of rays. But if I were to take away the lens and put an actual smaller object at this location and imagine all the, the light that sprays off of that arrowhead, uh, it would, you know, because of these dotted lines are just straight extensions of, of these lines, uh, it would create the same spray of rays. And that's all your eye has to work with is just a spray of rays. So if this spray of rays is, a, is the spray of rays that would come from an object, a tiny object at this closer location, when you put a big object far away and a lens, it looks to you like it is a tinier object that is closer. And so you've probably seen this if you've taken your glasses or someone else's glasses and and uh, looked at it, uh, you know, looked at a piece of paper or something. And everything sort of gets magnified and and becomes a little bit closer. Uh, and so this is a virtual image. It's not a real image because nothing is really happening here, but it's still an image because it, it to you it looks as though something is is uh, is happening here. And when I say you, your eyes are just lenses. So I can imagine erasing you and putting, putting an actual converging lens here. Oops. And this is what I did in the video. If I put a converging lens here, I can do all the calculations for this converging lens. You know, all this converging lens sees is this spray of rays. And so whether there's a real object at this spot that's spraying these rays, or whether it's the result of this complicated big object and diverging lens, this, this lens doesn't care. It sees the same spray of rays. So you might as well do the calculation for this lens, assuming that there is actually something here that then might converge onto a screen. Uh, let me actually draw this a little bit better. So maybe these will all converge Converge to a to an, a real image here that you can actually put on a on a screen. And again, not all the rays are going to hit this lens, but the ones that do are going to turn into an image here. And so, to do this this two lens calculation, you first do the calculation for this one, and you get this virtual image, which, if you looked at it, would look like there's something here. And if you used a second lens, um, you could just treat it as if this were the object, and these rays just went straight. Uh, and then they hit this lens and did whatever this, this lens would do. So that's a virtual image. It's an image on the wrong side of the lens. So it's a negative, negative eye. And it's virtual in the sense that nothing special is actually happening there. It's just a geometric extension of what's actually happening. Uh, let me take questions about that. And in the last 10 minutes, draw the, the other situation, which is a, a virtual object. So it's where where an object is on the wrong side of the lens. That was the other thing I showed in the, in the video with the dollar bill.
And it, it helps if you're really careful about uh, dotted lines versus straight lines. You know, dotted lines are just geometric extensions of straight lines. And if you have a complicated enough lens system, the, the dotted lines could be extensions of straight lines that don't actually end up being realized because before they can be realized, they're captured by yet some other lens. So it, these, these can get a little bit complicated, but we're not going to go go down that uh, go down that road of making super complicated lens systems. Uh, I think the and in the last the last part of your last homework, you'll probably need a three lens system. All right, let's let's talk about uh, virtual object. Okay, so so. Let me draw. Let me draw that. Okay. Let me let me show you the idea here. So the the idea is that you you have, um, you know, say you know, forget where this comes from. You know, maybe there's some lenses downstream, but uh, Here's your optic axis. You have some situation where there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of light that's converging to some some point way over here. To, so, a bunch of light that's converging to some point way over here. So, it's all coming. So again, maybe this is from from some downstream lens. Let me just redraw where this is because made them all converge there. Okay, but you say no, I don't, I don't want the light to converge here. I'm going to put a lens before it. So I'm going to put a lens over here. Now. What this is going to do is now suddenly all of these, all these lines I drew, are not the actual lines anymore, right? Because each of these lines is going to take some bend at this lens. So I'm going to take all these lines and I'm going to turn them into dotted lines by erasing erasing every so often to make some dots here. So what actually happens? Well. What actually happens is this converging lens makes these rays converge a little bit faster. So uh, let me pretend to know where that's going to happen. Uh, okay, so this is the, the ray that goes through the center of the lens. So it has to be somewhere along here. So let's imagine that it happens here. So let's imagine that the new rays converge here. All right. So the the way you can calculate where that is, I'm doing this a little bit backwards so I can actually draw the picture, is if you knew the focal length of this lens, f, and we drew our two basis vector rays. One of those rays is the rays, the ray that would go straight through. So I can, this, this one isn't, isn't dotted anymore. This is real here. That one still happens. But what happens to these, to this ray here? So this ray that, that is parallel, any ray that's parallel ends up going through the, through the focal point. So instead of continuing on as this dotted line would, this, this is actually going to take a turn. It's going to go through the focal point. Uh, oops, no. yes. So, so where these two cross, that's going to be where the the actual object is. Oh, sorry, the actual image is. Okay. So now, I can once I know what the two. Uh, two basis rays do, the one that goes straight through the center of the lens and just keeps going, and the one that comes in parallel and ends up 
going toward the focal point. I can draw what happens to all the other ones. They're all going to turn such that they cross through here. Uh, this one's going to turn even more and cross through here. And what you could do is you could put a screen here. And what's going what's to happen is all, all these rays that would have come to focus back here, once you put this lens in, are going to come to focus a little bit closer. And the same, the same equation applies. You just have to be a little bit careful. So, so this is the image. And it's happening, it's a real image because you can actually put a screen and have it focus on the screen. It's on the correct side of the lens for an image. So this is a positive I. So what is, what is O here? Well, O, minus O, so O is a negative number and minus O is this distance here. So this thing here is called a virtual object. So it's virtual in the sense that it's not a real object that's making these rays. And, but it is an object in the sense that if you do all the ray tracing from this object, you do the, the ray that comes straight through the center of the lens, you do the ray that, that would have been horizontal if it weren't for this lens. Uh, it's the rays that kind of come from this virtual object can be redirected and end up all at one particular point here. So this is a, this is the sense that this is an object, but it's a virtual object because it's not actually over here on this side of the lens making the light. Uh, but hopefully the way I explained it with some physical rays here would have come to focus here, but instead of coming to focus here, make sense of what's what's real and what you know where, where the actual solid rays that actually exist are and where the dotted rays that, that would have existed if I hadn't put this lens in. And uh, the relationship between these three distances, F, I, and minus O, is the same in this situation too. And on your, uh, well, let, let, me, let me pause and take questions here. And I'll, I'll, draw, I'll draw a situation where there's a virtual image and a virtual object. And that is the sort of final, final step in your homework. So does anyone have any questions about, about this situation, this virtual object, real image? Real image, because it's on the correct side of the lens and I can actually put a screen here and see it. Okay. Okay, so remember real images and real objects have positive signs for their things. Virtual images and virtual objects have negative signs. And so if I wanted a situation with a virtual image and a virtual object, these would both be negative. So that means that my, my one over F has to be negative, which means I have to be dealing with a diverging lens here. Let me draw a diverging lens here. And what this situation looks like is it looks like um, a bunch of rays that would have formed an image Let me draw dotted lines. They would have formed an image at some particular spot here like this. So uh, some dotted line. Some dotted line. Some dotted line. Some dotted line. So right now these are all straight. But as soon as I put this lens here, that's not what these rays are going to do. They're going to start, they're going to spread out 
like that. Uh, let me see, how are these gonna spread out? Maybe they're going to spread out like this, yeah. Certainly this one's gonna spread out like that. It's gonna spread out somewhere in between. Um, all right, so, so now let's consider the, so this is what the rays are actually gonna do. So there's no real object, right? There's no object over on this side that's, that's making rays spread out. There's no image on this side because uh, you know, these are all also spreading out. But if you trace these back, they're all gonna look like they're coming from a particular spot. Where is that spot? Well, we can trace the, the basis vector rays. So this one that goes straight through means that the spot has to be somewhere along this, this line. And then the other one that's of interest is this dotted line here. This dotted line uh, is, is coming from a ray that came parallel to the optic axis. And rays that come parallel to the optic axis, if I draw the dotted line back from here, end up meeting at the at the focal distance. So this is a minus minus f distance for this lens. And the place where these two things cross, which I guess would be way back here. Let me place where these two things cross up here, that's going to be where the the virtual image is formed. So maybe I should have done that in pink. Yeah, let me do it in pink so I can talk about the pink things. All right, so. So what that means is if you're, again, if you're looking with your, with your eyes at these pink rays that are splaying out, it looks as though they were coming from this pink object without the lens there. Uh, how is that the case? I don't, something seems odd there. I think I must not have drawn these other pink ones very, very, very well here. I think I may have exaggerated the, the splaying out. So if I draw all these pink, pink lines here, this will, this will splay out. And this will come here, splay out like that, yeah. Okay, I guess I didn't draw the lens big enough. Okay. So this, this thing here is going to be a virtual image. Again, because it's on the wrong side of the lens, it has a negative, negative distance associated with it. And it's virtual because you can't actually put a screen here and nothing will actually happen. But if you looked at all these rays, um, it looks like they're coming from, from here. Like that's the sense that it's an image. And this is a virtual object. Because it it's also on the wrong side of the lens to be an object. So minus i, minus o, those are the real distances, and minus f is the, the distance to this focal point. So that's a little complicated. And then the question in the homework is, how do I set up a situation where I have a real object that's making, you know, a real object plus a lens that's making this, these set of green lines. And then instead of an eye here, I have another lens that takes these diverging pink lines and refocuses them onto a real screen. 
So that's a matter of just kind of stepping step by step and doing these uh, trace ray tracings of, of the, the basis vector rays. And you don't have to do all the other all the other rays that are just here for, for demonstration purposes. Okay, I went a little bit over. I apologize for that. Um, I think I think this will make more sense as you build this up yourself on on the homework. Um, but it'll it'll help you explain sort of how how to arrange lenses to get various imaging effects. All right, uh, I'll take questions as as people exit. Sorry, I, I kept you a little bit too long today. Thank you. Thanks.